The next interview is with Charlotte McGill Hicks. We're back at the Bayport Blue Point Public Library, and today we're interviewing Charlotte McGill Hicks, a longtime resident, and their family owned a beautiful home here on Blue Point, right on Blue Point Avenue. So welcome, Charlotte. Okay. Good to have you here. Now, I already said your full name, right? Charlotte <laughs> McGill Hicks, H-I-X. And go ahead, Shaw. When and where were you born? I was born in New York City. When? What? When? Do you really want to know? Way back. Way, <laughs> way back way when. Way back. That's and fine. I arrived in Blue Point probably at two weeks oh. of age, three weeks of age. Oh. Right after you were born, mm-hmm. you were brought out here. Mm-hmm. And that was to the summer house, right? Your yeah. house was a summer yeah. house. Yeah. And you were just saying, where did you live? In, uh, we lived in Prospect Park. Prospect Park, in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. So many people did that. They had summer houses out here, yeah. or they came out for the hotels. Right. It was probably 10 degrees cooler out here than <laughs> it was in Brooklyn. Or I'm sure Manhattan. it was. How long was your family in Blue Point? Over 100 years you were here. And how did your family come to come to Blue Point for the summer? What led them to Blue Point? <laughs> I've never figured that out, but I kind of think there might have been family in oh, Sayville, Bayport. In the area. And I think they may have come yeah. out to visit and decided yeah. Little Alfred needed a summer yeah. place outside of Brooklyn or yeah. something. I don't know. And the train was running then, right? In the 1890s, we had train service. Could be. Yeah, we did. <laughs> so that was a big help. I know all those hotels that we had really flourished thanks to the railroad. Oh, yeah. Because most people that drive here would be... That like, would be a long drive. And did you drive out? Or, we I mean, did when I did. was born, but apparently uh, when they came, my horse and buggy, yeah. they would stop at the Garden City Hotel for oh. lunch and let the horses rest, Sure. and then they would continue. So they could do that in one day by horse. They could come out. It's a long way. That's but, a long yeah, trip. So I don't know where they but slept. But on the other hand, that. if you were to come out now on a Friday night in July, <laughs> it would take hours. Hours on the expressway. Oh, would. So your family came. It took a long time, but it was took worth it. Took a long it. time. Well, actually, grandfather Norwood, Fred Norwood, oh, no. he wanted to buy property in Quag, I think, oh, and he takes oh. grandma out oh. to look at it. And grandma says, oh, "I'm not living out here." Oh. So he's driving back through Patchogue. They're driving, and he sees a sign: John J. Rowe Real Estate. Oh, yeah. His mother's maiden name oh. was Rowe. So he went in and purchased the <laughs> Norwood estate. Isn't that, that was a big estate. Oh, it was. Oh, and that house is still standing, too. Oh, I know. Too. So they so, arrived 1903, <laughs> the Norwoods. 1903, the Norwoods were here. And where did you go to school? Were you in the city, I suppose? Yeah, I went to Packer Collegiate Institute in Brooklyn. Which one, Packer? Yeah. That was a wonderful school. Oh, it was a good is school. Is it still there, it's Packer? still going strong. Yeah, and then I went on to Skidmore. Now, was that all girls? Yeah, that oh, At, Those days, yes. In those days, it was all yes. girls. That was yeah. a private school. Then, yeah, wasn't mother it? went yeah. there, my Aunt Edith oh. Norwood went there, and another oh. cousin went there, so. Boy, that's pretty nice. Nice tradition. Oh, yeah. Do you ever stay in touch with any alumni oh, or your yes. classmates? You oh, do. Oh, yes. We've, we've been nice? corresponding madly. Yeah. Back and forth, because we just had a big one. <laughs> you did? You had a, a, a reunion. Was your class big? No, there were 39 of us, and an awful lot of us are already dead. Yeah, deceased. Yeah. They've gone to what we used to call the great homeroom in the sky. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Packer. So anyway, when you were out here, what about, what jobs did you have, or what were you most interested in doing? Swimming, sailing, boating, riding horses. I was never a fan of tennis, even though we had a tennis court, which... They let grow over with grass because I guess <laughs> I was kind of a dud at tennis. But basically, I was canoeing and yeah. everything. You could either do it on the lake or on the bay. Enjoying the bay, the uh-huh. water. Uh-huh. And there's always a nice breeze down oh, there. Oh, I know. I would go to Avery's Beach, which sometimes, sometime mm-hmm. when I was really little, we swam right off of our beach. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. And they have a lot of sure. pictures of me and the little old Conklin Sharpie, which is in the postcards, yeah. was anchored out off of Blue Point oh. Dock. And to hide from everybody, my friends and I would swim out to the Sharpie, yeah. turn it over, and we'd be in a nice oh, pocket of air. It. We'd go up underneath. Yeah. And then where well, our parents couldn't see oh, us no. for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, was the Bay Water clean then? 
No, we came out with brown mustaches. You had mustaches. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Brown ones. I wonder if the bay, I think it's getting cleaner, I think it actually. Is. Yeah. You I know, think a new so. inlet was cut through in the I storm. Heard. And they say it's cleaned out the bay. I don't know. I'll have to go down and look. Yeah, you have to go down and check it out. <laughs> yeah. And then what about your, your your parents? Were you an only child? No. Yes. You were an only child? And then you had two daughters, two I daughters. think. Two yeah. daughters, yeah. Yeah. And how did you meet Jonathan? College, blind oh, date. College. And what college was that? Yeah, that was Union. He oh, went Union? to Union and I went to Skidmore. Oh, it's wonderful. So. That's where you met Jonathan. And your two daughters are alive and well, I presume. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Three grandchildren. And three grandchildren. Yeah. I hope they're local. Are they? Yeah, they're local. Yeah. And Anthony and Kathy live oh. with me in the summer now in oh, Atlantic that's Beach. Nice. And um, Anthony is surfing, and 14, he has a job as an oh. instructor. He does. And this morning he said, oh. There are no waves today. What am I going to do? And there's I said, no wind. There's nothing. Yes, see, it no. was north wind, and it was buggy no. and hot and Not miserable. Good. Too hot. Yeah. It'll break, though. It's going to break, I think, I heard. Friday. I hope, I hope so. Did your family come out here by train then or no? They they drove here, I think here, we didn't drove they? most they of drove the time. Out. That must have taken a long time. Yeah. Because I think the only road was the Montauk Highway. Oh, I think so. There was no southern state way back or uh, expressway, certainly. No. I know the oh. Norwoods had a uh, chauffeur, but yeah. I guess the McGills didn't. <laughs> that would take quite a long time, oh, yeah. I bet, to go from yeah. there. Plus, in the summer, you'd have to bring... Or did you keep clothes? Maybe you kept oh, we clothes. Kept clothes down so you didn't here. have to pack too no. much to come no. out. No. Summer clothes were already here. They did for me because I was growing, but. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, everybody else, they left yeah. it out here. and. I was thinking that people in the hotels used to come with steamer trunks, you know, if they were spending <laughs> the summer. But you had a house, so it uh-huh. didn't make yeah. much difference. No, we were caught out here in the 48 snowstorm blizzard oh yeah and we didn't have any clothes we didn't have wow. anything so we walked down to the house oh. and got some night clothes for yeah. ourselves but we didn't have anything warm oh. and then we went back and stayed with the spories oh the spories i remember that yeah. name yeah the spories didn't they live right here on madison yeah. street madison and they yeah. were on smith street for a while and they were yeah. on dane street for a while yeah the spories i wonder what ever happened to them uh sven is up in yeah weren't Mount they from of scandinavia Boston, or somewhere switzerland or, I switzerland I think. and he's up in massachusetts somewhere oh. and i don't know where peter and elizabeth are oh oh that's right i haven't heard that name in a long time do you remember any historical events like storms of the war or railroad closing that affected your family and the community at all? Well, the army oh, took over the yeah. little house, um, and I think they were. Daddy said they were only there about six months. That was World uh, War Two. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, during every hurricane, we would leave that and go to my aunt Edith's on uh, the Norwood here. because that was high ground. High ground. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I. And I think the 38 <clears throat> hurricane mother was, said she went out and the pond was coming this way and the bay was coming Ooh, this way right and she said we were kind of in the middle. We got out of there. You get out of there. <laughs> we left. <laughs> <laughs> now didn't one of those, wasn't there a year etched on the window down there at yes. the house? And what was the that year? That was the army and the I army. think I put it in the book, Forty. Oh. 40. 43? It might have been 40. Like I wonder if the window was still there. It was when I saw it. It was. <laughs> and they etched it into uh-huh, the window. Uh-huh. That's sort of a nice souvenir of World War. Right. And what were they doing there? Did they look out for enemy ships? <laughs> what, a submarine in I the Great South A submarine <laughs> wouldn't go down too deep. <laughs> I don't think it would quite make it. Oh. I don't know what they did there. I can see if it was on the ocean. Yeah, you know, I you'd be tell. looking out at sea, but the bay. The bay. That must have been a nice spot to be posted. Oh, though. I agree. You know. It really was a little primitive, but, you know, hand pump. <laughs> yeah, hand pump, but still you had the bay there, and uh-huh. it was nice, the yeah. beach. Yeah. And do you remember the railroad station in town? Did you oh, ever use yes. it? You did yeah, use I it? I have some pictures that I think I emailed oh, you of, yeah, yeah. of the family at the Blue Point Railroad train station. station. Yeah. That was the age of steam, steam That's engines. True. And I remember listening to that steam oh, engine. Could we could hear it all the way down sure there. Sure you could. And even the soot. You know, coming from those engines. Oh, yes. Mm. <laughs> the Norwoods might have noticed it more because their house was close I to think the track. So. Or we're further south. but Now, they used to have fires over there. Did they have they, fires they, from the cinders? From the cinders sure. that would come out. <laughs> I just remember my mother used to complain a bit about the greenhouses. You know, you always had to check the laundry, I guess. Uh-huh. To make sure if the wind was coming this Which, way, don't hang it out. <laughs> I don't know. Cinders. The cinders, yeah. Cinders would fall. 
That was one of the hazards of growing up in Blue Point years right. ago. <laughs> we yeah. didn't have dryers. No, no dryers. <laughs> no, you wouldn't do the wash if it were raining. Of course not. No. And what summer activity? I'm sure you were locked into the bay and boating. I was locked in the bay and sure. sailing, swimming, canoeing. Hmm. We used to take Daddy's motorboat and go down to oh. the bay through and over to, into the sound. And wow. And then we'd... Boy, you went all the way into the sound. Oh, yeah. Peconic Bay. And wow. Did you ever use Shinnecock Canal? Oh, sure. You did? I have pictures somewhere. Wow. I don't think I put them in the And boat. was that on a motorboat? Yeah. Yeah. And Grandma and Grandpa did it before I was <clears> born, too, because wow. there's a picture of their boat. Down at, over to the end Shinnecock Canal. Isn't that wonderful? And out here on the bay, you use sailboats? Yeah, and Daddy's, yeah. Daddy's motorboat. Yeah. And we'd go over to Fire Island and tie up and stay yeah. overnight. Did you ever go to Blue Point Beach? Oh, yeah. It's still yeah. over there. Yeah, I know it's still there. About 12 houses, I think. Oh, we basically were at Davis Park, Leisure yeah, Beach. Davis Park, yeah, Le- Leisure Beach. That was quite a place. Still is, of mm-hmm. course. I was just over there the other night, and the one thing I always find misleading is the name, the casino. Oh, I know. People hear the casino, <laughs> you know. and they think they're going to Las Vegas. Oh, I know. Gambling. Yeah. Uh-huh. There's no gambling no. over there. No. <laughs> no, no anyway. one time we went over for the, for the night, and they put us to bed when, you know, at dark, whenever. Yeah. We, and I woke up the next morning in the week's boatyard. <laughs> oh, wait. Somebody had, from Blue Point had gotten stuck over there, wow. and so Daddy brought them, them back. back. And, we and you didn't even know it. <laughs> and that was a motorboat? Uh-huh. Jeff surprised the vibration. vibration didn't wake you up. <laughs> Must have been a sound sleeper. Yeah. Well, the beach is still a treasure. I oh, mean, yeah. The shoreline here is a treasure, and then over at Fire Island, that's a treasure. And you remember going to Avery's, right? The oh, yes. Beach club? And we had a little bathhouse, yeah. locker, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Do you remember a name Thiner? Do you remember Mr. and Mrs. Thiner ran that? That might have been in the 60s. No, they that They were of was... German extraction, I think. No, that was after I was married. That was after I, that, yeah. yeah. And they always had the netting up for jellyfish. Oh, jellyfish, and the jellyfish would get they through. They still got through, because I remember getting stung in there. And oh, yes. Mm-hmm. That and the wooden, they had two wooden slides. Oh, they were going. fun. They were fun. As, as long as they were wet. Make sure they're wet before you go down. <laughs> or you got stung. But that was a nice. That was a nice beach. That the was view nice was handy. Beach. It was right across the street. Oh yeah. You walk right over there. Uh huh. Were there any fish in the pond there at Ferndale? I think the turtles ate it. Oh, the ate turtles them. ate. Them. I think there were still turtles. There. I don't know the big tortoises yeah. with the big head the size yeah. of my fish. So they would eat those. I think so. Wow. Yeah, I bet they're still down there. I'm sure they are. Yeah. And that was all hand dug, right? But mm-hmm. there was a spring there, apparently. In the back, yeah. Which your grandfather was, it discovered, and, and had then it he dug just out. Had, you know, Tolman, they... Andrew Tolman. And you had boats in, in the lagoon, or not the well, lagoon. Well, the canoe but, uh, was there, the Conklin yeah. Sharpie was there, my rubber boats were there. And quite a few bridges, all those, I don't know how many, two or three islands? Let me see, there were three islands. Three islands. So there was one, two... Three. Bridges. Four bridges. Four bridges. Wow. Yeah, in this old picture, I can see the summer kitchen back there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That must yeah. have been somewhere, somewhere before 1920. And what was Elsie's last name? Latham. Latham. Elsie. Yeah. She was from Britain, right? Yep. I remember her. She used to walk up the street to go to church. That's the oh, only way yeah. I knew her. That <laughs> yes, was my one big contact uh-huh. with Elsie, uh-huh. walking up the street. But she was a nice lady. And your family hired her, right? She was my governess. But then they kept her for years. Oh, well, the war came. Yeah. And she really didn't want to go back to England, so no. she just stayed, and I wound up taking care of her. Wasn't and my that... children adored her. We'd chase her all over. Yeah, Elsie. <laughs> my former governess had left us to go take care of Jane Fonda. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Was that Mommy Dearest? Was that Jane Fonda? Who one? Oh, no, Jane Fonda was the other one. Yeah, yeah. She was mixed up in Vietnam, and wasn't then she? Yeah, Fonda's yeah, daughter, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jane Fonda. I think Ooh. I was good. To, I was glad to get rid of her. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> let her move on. And I had wow. Elsie, with whom we all adored. So Elsie stayed there. Did Elsie do any cooking, or did she help she out? She didn't know how to cook any more than the rest she, of us she did. did. <laughs> <laughs> we learned. <laughs> wow. And Elsie passed away. Is she buried here or is she buried Actually, over? she's buried in our plot. Oh, in she Brooklyn. is in Brooklyn. What cemetery would that be? That was um, Cypress Hills. Oh, Cypress Hills. That's nice. Where Mother didn't want to be buried. She wanted oh. to be in Greenwood, but she went yeah. up in Cypress Hills. Well, good for her. <laughs> it's a nice cemetery. 
And I know it at the house down there, you always, what's the number of the house today? 55. 55? Yeah. I, see, in the old days, there were no house numbers. Oh, right. It's just on the map as McGill's. Uh-huh. And I, it's 55. I, I would not have known. I know the numbers start at the bay. Right. And then they come up. Right. The higher the number, the further away from the bay. Yeah. So you were 55, Blue Point Avenue. Wow. And um, I <clears throat> found letters to mother and daddy. And yeah. Mother. And just Mr. and Mrs. McGill. Blue Point, Blue Long Point. Island. And they got it. And they got it. No zip code. <laughs> no say Nothing. They got it. Isn't that amazing? Mm-hmm. And in those days, they had to come up here, I think, to get the mail. Oh, we did. Right across the street. Street, yes. That was that, the post that office. Was the, every time I go in jams, I always say to Monty, I don't know if you know Monty or not, the owner, how's everything in the post office, Monty? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was the old Blue Point, Point Post, Post office. office. But everyone had to go there to pick up the mail. Oh, we did. Not necessarily every day, but every yeah, two or days. three days you had to go up and get your yeah. mail. Yeah. And also, I know your family was into cars at that estate. A lot of different cars. Oh, daddy. Well, you know, the oh. car got to be five years old and, and get a new one. Car. Get Do you have any favorites? Well, I like the Woody. The Woody. The Woody yeah. was really nice. You could always find it because it stood above yeah. every other car. And that was back in the 40s, right, mm-hmm. the Woody? Yeah, and they sold that uh-uh. in, oh. in the 50s. They did. I wish I had bought it. I wish I had bought it. I was about it. eight years old, so I couldn't <laughs> buy a car. <laughs> oh, no, I learned Woody. to drive in that thing. You did? Mm-hmm. Where did you take your driver's test? Out here? Mm-hmm. Pat Child. That's where I took mine, too. In the Woody. In the Woody. I learned to drive in Motherwood Park. I think she would park Mm -mm. it on Blue Point Avenue. And then I was told to get in the, I think the other car was a Ford. And I had to learn how to back park on Blue Point Avenue behind the Woody. So if I hit the Woody, I guess that was okay. okay. (laughs) (laughs) But don't put a dent in your father's car. No, of course not. (laughs) No, Woodies were beautiful. They really were. That was a beautiful car. Daddy varnished it every year. Did he really? Yeah, all that. That was real wood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And did you keep that car out here? Did you keep any out he here, or did you bring it back to Brooklyn? Later on, it was mm. left, left here, here. And, yeah. but it used to go into Brooklyn and stay mm. in the uh, garage at the factory. Oh, that's good. Yeah. What factory was That was the family business? Yeah, the Edward L. McGill Company factory. And what uh, did you make? What was the product? The gauge pins, which were for gauge printing pins. press. Oh, he went, Grandpa, presses. well, his father died oh. a couple of years, I guess he was 19, oh. 1865, he died, mm-hmm. and oh. of course all the children had to help work out, and his uncle yeah. had a printing business in New York City, oh. and um, Grandpa went to work for him. And he was what they called a printer's devil. And the printer's devil was supposed to put the paper on the press within exactly the same spot because the margins had to be exactly even. And if they weren't, paper was expensive. And so Grandpa invented these little gauge pins that went on, and you'd put the paper in that, and the margins were always even. Isn't that amazing? And eventually went into business for himself. Good. And stayed in Manhattan until about 1920. Oh. Two, and then they moved to Brooklyn, and he, uh, Edward, died in 1923, and then Daddy ran it until the city took the property in 1969. And the product was called Gauge Pins. Mm-hmm. The McGill See, Gauge I would, Pins. I, would, I saw the end of it, but I didn't know what the product really was. Yeah. Gauge Pins. A Isn't gauge. that amazing? They're called Grippers. Grippers. And I think he had 37 patents wow. when he died. And that was one of those articles he got a patent uh-huh. for something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he must have been pretty inventive. He was. Yeah, he, he was an inventor. There was the, all the printing things and lighting and the old septic system oh. that was down here, which was that wooden thing that used to be in back of the rose trellis. I don't know if you ever I, saw I don't it. remember that. No. no. And the, the water from the house would drain into one side, and the other side was two, had yeah. two sides. And when this side got full, it was closed down, and the water was sent over to this side. Mm-hmm. As if the first side dried out, mm-hmm. it was all dug up, probably yeah. put in the garden. I don't sure. know. <laughs> probably. And then when this side filled up, it was reversed back to this side. And it lasted until yeah. 1978. 78? Mm. That's a long time. That's a long time. <laughs> yeah. And how many bedrooms did you have in that house? It must have been... Five. Five bedroom house. Yeah. It started with two, and then they added... An addition. Well, actually, there must have been one for the maid in the little house. Oh, okay. And then... 
Although they added the extension, she must. There must have been a bedroom back there. Yes. And then they raised the roof in the back, <clears throat> and that became the maid's bedroom. And her bathtub was in the attic. In the attic. Mm-hmm. Boy, that's unusual. Yeah. And when I left, the bathtub was still in the attic. It's still in the attic. <laughs> I know I've seen in pictures where the attic window was open. Uh-huh. It pushed up, I think, uh-huh. or out. Out, out, I think. Yes, yeah. Yeah, we had the same thing at our house where you pushed the window, but then we used to put a stick in it. A the stick attic in it, To yes. hold it open. <laughs> yes. And it would stay open all summer, I think. Oh, yes. Uh-huh. You wouldn't close it even in rain. We didn't close not. the window. Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> but it did cool off the, uh, the attic. Right. It yeah. did. And what do you remember doing out here in the summer? Were you ever involved with, like, the, uh, I don't know, carnivals or bazaars or things that were going on in the community in the summer? I know we went mm-hmm. to the mall. Do you rem- did anybody ever mention the Busy Bees at the, no. at the Baptist Church? Was that the church? Did they do knitting? or? We, I don't know what kind of yeah. things we did, but it was, that I was guess, the, during the war. The old Blue Point Baptist Church. Baptist Church, yeah. right. Were you, were, you, were you active in that church over there? Well, it was the only Protestant uh, church out here, yeah, I guess. Yeah, it was the only one. <laughs> yeah. So that's where they went in the summer. Wow. And then went back to... Who was the minister? Do you have any... Was uh, his name Falk? Oh, yeah, Reverend Falk, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, his first name was I-L-O-F, Iloff. That I never knew. F-A-L-K. <laughs> his daughter's still alive. I know really? his daughter, Yeah. Yeah, very nice person. But he's now deceased, of oh, course. Yeah, now, Reverend yeah. Falk. I think he was here for about 20 years. He was here a long time. Yeah. And that's a beautiful church. Oh, it is. It really is. It's amazing the way it, that church was dedicated in 1931, but that was during the Depression. Yeah, yeah. And it's a beautiful church. Yeah, it really is. But they had some good benefactors. I think summer people were very Probably, generous to yeah. them. Yeah. Because I don't think the locals would have the money to build that beautiful church. Yeah. But it's just beautiful. Did you know Mr. Reed? Oh, Over yes. Here, Mr. Reed. He was stuck on that same blizzard. Oh, he was stuck here, too. Well, he came out with oh. us, and he decided to mm-hmm. go back to Brooklyn yeah. the same day. Oh. And he spent the night on the train. We he, <laughs> train didn't move. <laughs> it didn't budge. Oh. I wonder didn't. where he spent the night. What? <laughs> somewhere. Somewhere between here like and Brooklyn. Like an Islip or Bayshore or, or somewhere. Somewhere on the train. Oh. I kept my sailboat. <clears throat> he had a boat, a boathouse over on Cory Creek. Cory Creek, yeah. And he let us keep my sailboat there. Oh. His house is still standing. It's yeah, a beautiful I've seen house. That. Yeah. Very beautiful. Yeah, but I know he was very good to the uh, Baptist Church. I can never get that straight in my mind. <laughs> they changed the name now to the Blue Point Bible Church. Oh, okay. Uh, about 15 years ago. But in my mind, it's, it's still the Blue Baptist. Point Baptist Church. <laughs> yeah, that's a very beautiful church. So let's see, what else? You remember the railroad station, of course, oh, you yes. said and that. Oh, yes, of course, flows. Oh, and flows, of oh, course. Oh, flows. flows. Did you know my mother wouldn't go there when Why? it first opened? Why? Because it was always crowded, and she it decided it was during uh, yeah. Prohibition. And it yeah. was probably one of those places where you shouldn't go. You shouldn't go, like a roadhouse. <laughs> yes. But I don't know, I never heard anything about alcohol down no, there. No, never, no, but no, mother assumed no. that because this crowd uh-huh. was at the yep. lows, that it was a speakeasy. And yeah, that's true, because they used to get a night crowd down uh-huh. there. I think she was open until like 10 o'clock at night. Oh, I think she was. And uh, I know people would leave the Gateway Theater or the movies or, and then go to flows. <laughs> but probably your mother thought they were drinking over I'm there sure. or something. I'm <laughs> sure. Flows. She's buried, by the way, here in Blue Point Cemetery. Her last name was Kimball, Florence Kimball. Died in 1950. But anyway, Flows is a landmark. Oh, it is. Yep. I always think it's like a Friendlies that never took off. You know the original Friendlies Uh up there in Massachusetts? Flows. And it's still going strong. Oh, I know. When I left, it was... Have a nice lunch. It flows. Flows. Yeah, nice lunch. It flows. Yes, you'll probably be sitting on the beach eating a yogurt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and did you have any contact with the library back in the old days? Or your family? I would be in and out because I, I walked in and I was yeah. thinking, this is so different. So different. I mean, it's so I big. Know. Do you remember the old Bennett house that used to stand on the front lawn here? And that was a library for a while. Oh, I remember that. Then they yeah, demolished it and it. put this part of this building up and then put additions onto it, yeah, of course. Yeah, I remember the carnivals that used to be mm. back of the firehouse. Oh, yeah, right over here. Sure. Yeah. That was their big fundraiser. Oh, I know, and it was fun. I remember one of the firemen saying, you come to our carnival, we'll go to your fire. <laughs> <laughs> 
That was funny. They always had a sense of humor. Do you remember Bob Brown over there? Oh, of course. Bob was a good man. And then the Nicholsons next oh, door. Oh, right next door with Nicholson, sure. And I did hear from Cecilia the day of the oh, house tour of my yeah, house. Cecilia. And I haven't heard from her since. She lives in Brooklyn. Yeah. She's not in good health, but she lives in Brooklyn yeah. today. Yeah. And, and the boy, Neil, he's all grown up now. Of course, he's a doctor down in well, Stone he's... Mountain, Georgia. Oh, really? And he was up here within the last two years. His grandparents are buried out here yeah, in the back. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's a nice person. Yeah, Nicholson's. Everyone knew the Nicholson's. And in Little League, we had Nicholson Field. I don't know if you remember that, by the ice cream plant. Oh. There was a Nicholson Field named for that family. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, they named the road uh, over on the old Norwood place Norwood, which they mis- Norwood. It's misspelled. It misspelled. Should be Norwood. N A R. Uh-huh. Norwood. That's a nice house, though. It's still kept very yeah, nice. Yeah, How were you related? How were the... My McGill's? mother was in Norwood. Oh, your mother's maiden name. And the mother and daddy went oh. to the same church in Brooklyn. Oh, they did. Okay, so... It was and a... mother swore she would never marry a man Uh-oh. who had ever heard of Blue Point. Heard of Blue Point. So what did she do? Yep, she married. <laughs> heard of Blue Point. And who was out here first? Norwoods? No, the McGill's oh, were the here McGill's in 1890 and then and they 1903. Built, oh, 03, that house was yeah. built. No, no, no. They oh. didn't build that house. Oh, they didn't. Oh, you know... It was built by an Englishman? Yeah. Lind. Lind. L-Y-N-D-E. And apparently he went Lind. bankrupt. He went bankrupt, yes. Yeah. And then he was going to give up his U.S. citizenship. He had a big feud with the United States. Oh, that I didn't know. He going back to England. But then, unfortunately, he was killed in a car accident. Yeah, Charles W. Lind. Lind. I remember that, that yeah. So Lind built the place, but then your relatives would buy it. We bought it. That's right. And there was Norway. a clock in there, uh, oh. which we still have, and it's oh. called an English regulator. Oh. The house was supposed to be furnished, but it wasn't oh. completely furnished. Yeah. But this clock is, we still have it. Good. And I still have the dining room chairs. <laughs> oh. From the Norwood estate. Mm-hmm. And that was a big estate. Yeah. I'm glad there's a street named that. Well, kind mis- of named after misspelled. Because <laughs> they own both sides of the road, and I because I did both sides of Atlantic Avenue or Week Street. We- Weeks. Weeks. Okay, Week Street, right? Because the Olvanies had a big estate down right. there too. Right. And the McGill estate didn't that once run from Middle Road right to the bay? That Except was- for the one piece, you know, the oh, narrow the hotel. little piece. Um, he. No, there's a little tiny narrow piece. Oh, there is. Um, and that's where Mills married the dentist. Oh, um, Hayes. That's right. Hayes was the dentist. And they wanted yeah. to keep that as the access to oh. the property behind us. Oh, but okay. I don't know whether Brookhaven got in there and know. put in, cut our lower mm-hmm. lot mm-hmm. and yeah. put Grandview Drive in. But that original yeah. narrow little thing was supposed to be And on Grandview the Drive, even today, there's a bridge there. You know, you know your stream behind your property, that stream goes south, mm-hmm. but I believe there's a, a bridge right on Grandview Drive oh, there is. Mm-hmm. under which that stream still uh-huh. runs. And what else did you want to bring up while you're um, here? Well, actually, the deed for the little pro- the little house. The, the little beach, house. The oh. beach. That, <clears throat> on the original deed from, I guess it was to my grandfather, it said that there was the right to launch ships and vessels. Oh. And they did find some kind of something in the sand, I think, when we were doing the renovation. That must have been some kind of like where they could launch a launch. That's wow. from the boats. And uh, but obviously that came off the deed when it came yeah, to me. Right. I don't think you'd want to launch a ship or a vessel no, from there now. <laughs> no. And the docks always been there, the sun house, right? At yeah, but in of... that picture I found just mm-hmm. as I was leaving, there was no dock. There was no, no dock, no. no. Oh. That was probably printed around 1900, maybe, or something like that. Yeah, because these pictures, yeah. I think, were 93-ish to And the dock got beat up, you know, in Sandy. Oh, really? It got beat up, but it's been completely restored by the town. It looks beautiful today. And there's still crabbing down there and, <laughs> you know, fishing. Fishing, that, that was always fun. Yeah, it was fun. You could spend hours down there. Oh, yes. Hours. And what's the biggest change, well, since Blue Point's since you've been at Blue Point, maybe more traffic or a lot more traffic. A lot more traffic. I mean, we were kind yeah. of very relaxed and yeah. And I guess the speed is caught up with everybody else. Yeah, it's amazing when you think in the old days each house had one car, mm-hmm. basically, mm-hmm. and now each house has maybe five <laughs> cars. I know. 
I mean, I have two cars. Why do I need two cars as a widow? I don't know. Do you keep them both on Long Island? No, or up in New Hampshire. Up, up in New Hampshire. I may have to sell the little one because my grandson has his eye on it, and oh. he's going to Brewster Academy up in Wolfboro oh, next okay. winter. Oh, He's very dyslexic. Oh, he is. And, okay. um, That's good. Yeah. So he's going to Brewster Academy, uh -huh. and he said, uh -huh. Now, Mama, when I get to be 16, I want your little car. And I said... Like heck you will. <laughs> oh, <not yet>. <laughs> <laughs> Kids always think that way. Oh though, don't yes. They? Uh huh. Will he take driving lessons or? I don't know how they work that. I've been too, you know, resident of New York State. Yes. And yes. Living in New Hampshire. I don't know. I don't know how that works. I don't know how it works either. And your barn on the property was always nice. Yeah. Yeah, that was that, a nice barn. And they apparently people who, well, the caretaker lived upstairs. Upstairs. Yeah. And I don't know who that was. Was that Andrew Tolman? I doubt it. I was know. it Philip Rich? I doubt it. Mm -hmm. And I, the only gardener that I really remember was Willis Smith. <clears throat> he lived in Bayport. Okay. And he grew vegetables that were wonderful. And brought them over. Yeah, and it's at six o'clock at night when we would have dinner. He'd go and pick the corn. And leave it on the back stairs and then go home. Doesn't get any fresher. No, it doesn't. And then one year we had so many vegetables that Mother thought it would be a good idea to set up a vegetable stand in front of yeah, the house. Sell them. I did. Mrs. Cop bought everything. She bought everything. <laughs> right across the street. Right across the street. So my sale didn't last very long. <laughs> wow. Yeah, she was a good cook, I believe. And she ran that. I don't know what it was, a home over there or something. Eventually became a yeah, home. See, it, see the lodge or yeah, something yeah. like that. And yeah. then I guess they sold it to the Lacey's? I guess so. I don't really know where that went. I know it was somebody that Jonathan Cops. knew that wanted to oh, buy it when the Lacey's for, was for selling the property. it. No, he wanted to run a, a nursing home oh, over there, home and there. Jonathan knew this guy well enough, and he went and talked to Mick, and he said, Mick, uh, I don't know what... I'm, I'm just going to tell you, if you get involved with that man, be very careful. Yeah, be careful. Right? And Mick got annoyed at the closing and yeah, yeah. walked out. Wow. Well, it's all gone now. I know. I now saw that. Now there's huge new houses, McMansions down there. The nuns are still there. Yeah, I've heard. They, but you know, in the last storm, they lost 43 the trees. trees. They lost a lot of trees on their property. They have 10 acres there, but it takes a while. They planted new ones. I can't wait to see them in like 50 more years. Yeah, long after we're gone, we'll be long looking after down we're at gone, them. They'll look beautiful, I'm sure. But Sandy was tough. That was a tough storm here. Yeah, well, I didn't. I was lucky in Atlantic Beach. I thought Nothing. I'd lost a screen, but I didn't even lose that. You didn't Somebody lose that. Boy, that's Across great. the street, a disaster, but they were on the water. I'm not on the water. Yeah, maybe that's what saved yeah. you. I mean, the water came up within oh, yeah, I'm sure it would. a couple mm. of inches, yeah. but I was very lucky. Wow. You hope the next time. Yeah. I hope there isn't a next time. Yeah. Now, when you sold the house down here, did you sell much of the furniture with it? No. Oh, you, you took the furniture. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. So that's still in, in No, in it's family. in New Hampshire. It may, good. It may good. come back. I don't know. Because yeah. I was showing a friend of mine up there. Uh, the, that book, and yeah. he said, oh, I recognize that. I recognize that. Yeah, knows it right away. <laughs> they knew the furniture. Uh -huh. Well, he's been in the house, and yeah. nobody's seen it. Knew it. <laughs> uh, that's where it went. Was your porch there always screened in? Yes. It was always. Uh, well, as long as I remember. Yeah. I've seen pictures of my house, but it didn't have screens. You know, a screen porch. It had a porch. Yeah, it had a porch. But I thought to myself, what about the mosquitoes in the old days? Maybe that's why. But they you know what happened? Screens. Someone told me too. Like in the old days, people didn't wear shorts. They didn't wear short sleeve shirts. Men and women were always like covered, covered, except for their face and their hands. I know. So maybe mosquitoes didn't bother them as much. I don't know. That could be because I do have a picture yeah. of an open porch. It was open. open. My mother and my grandparents and. I always remember it screened in. Yeah, I think, yeah. well, that's all I remember, but yeah. this picture was definitely without screens. Yeah, that was the old days. Yeah, and they ate out there. I would have thought the flies would have. Yeah, <laughs> yellow jackets, because they're always attracted to food. Oh, I know. I have a little porch with no screen, but you can't eat there. No, no. no. Never. No, the front part was never screened in. It was just no. the side piece. The side piece was screened in. Nice. So people knew how to stay cool, though, even though they, they wore did. a lot of clothes. They knew how to stay cool. Mm -hmm. 
And that house really did not need air conditioning. Even you didn't in, need it. You, no. you were down right by the water. You had a nice yeah, and breeze. You had the breeze. The attic was sure. always open and all the windows inside were open. Did the doorways open. in the house have transoms? Of course. You did have transoms. So that all adds to the flow of air. Oh, yeah. All the right transoms the were open. And, and in summer, did you ever just hang a curtain there instead of a door, shutting a door? I've seen that in some old houses. Yeah, we had curtains. Where they had a curtain hanging where the door should have been closed. Yeah. yeah. But all that was for air. Right. And it worked. I mean, it, it, second floor, even the attic, stayed not too bad. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Because we had sliding doors. Yeah, that helps. And they were open, but yeah. there was a curtain there. In the summer. Yeah. Did you ever come out here in the winter, or was it strictly summer? I... I remember Thanksgivings out here. You did come out on Thanksgiving. Yeah. And that apparently, would be chilly. Well, they had a cylinder stove, Daddy well, told did. you and I. And I don't know what a cylinder stove is. Did you have heat is. in that house? Was yes. there a furnace of some yeah, sort? Yeah, there was a furnace. Yeah, so you could heat it. Yeah. And oh. then the, the stove in the kitchen, coal, well, that, coal gas, true. and wood. Sure. And then the furnace that was kind of in the middle. Upstairs was cold. Cold. And we had the kerosene heaters. Yeah. Um, warmed it up. You warmed it up. <clears throat> and then you could close so many doors, you could just see where you wanted to be. And you never minded anybody ice skating on your pond all winter? Cause that's I still... only got to ice skate once. Once, because you wouldn't have been I here. I wasn't here. You weren't here. But I know, <laughs> I have pictures, I have an old picture at home showing a group of nuns ice skating on your pond in the winter, of course. <laughs> and they're wearing white veils. And they're skating all around. <laughs> they must have come across straight when you weren't I looking. think so. <laughs> well, the Sorg family, do you remember them? What was the name? Sorg, S-O-R-G. Sorg. No, they were in the printing name. business, and they oh. used to publish a lot of the annual oh. reports for the big companies, yeah, yeah. and they lived behind us. And oh. I met the, I guess it was the daughter oh. of one, the granddaughter, I guess it would have been. And um, then I went to her wedding, and the uncle came up to me and he yeah. said, Well, you know, Charlotte, now that we're all out of Blue Point, I'll tell you this. Yeah. And I said, What? He said, We loved your corn. They loved the corn. <laughs> <laughs> because the corn was at the end of it Ocean would, Avenue. Yeah. So they just wandered down there and it goes. helped themselves to the corn. We the never corn. missed it. No, you wouldn't miss it. You really wouldn't. <laughs> no. So you did grow some vegetables. Oh, we grew, Willis grew everything. Everything. All the flowers. He yeah, and I remember beautiful. Daddy would sit with the catalog. Yeah. Burpees. Burpees, burpees catalog. And they would figure out, he and Willis would Gee. figure out what they were going to plant. What and where. And where. There was a garden mm -hmm. behind the house, and there yeah. was a garden up uh, at the end of Ocean Avenue. Well, there must have been, I don't know, 50 postcards made of your house. Oh, I'm sure. All different views. Yeah. People used to come and paint it. Oh, yeah, And they'd sure. sit at the end of the driveway yeah. and paint it. Too bad it's all gone. I know. It really is. It was another day and age. Did you always have indoor plumbing in the house, or did you have outhouses? Um, in the back of the house, there yeah. were... I'm just wondering about the old pictures. Oh, well, at the picture that's yeah, see, I see a clothesline there, of course. That's oh, we had the You have to dry the yeah. clothes, but... Yeah. The plumbing and electricity, let me see, yeah. went in in... 1907, I think. 07, indoor plumbing. Wow. But in the back of the kitchen, there were two two coal bins. Oh, there were. Oh, yeah. And then there were these little doors, oh. little white doors, where oh. I guess the outhouse, I mean, there was a, yeah. in, it was indoor plumbing, but it went into oh. something, and then these little doors opened from the outside oh. and took out the potty. The potty went outdoors, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the way I kind of remember. I remember a little gazebo there right yeah, on the yeah, uh, yeah. water. Yeah. Just beautiful. Your parents must have done a lot of entertaining, didn't they, and your grandparents? When, the, when they had mm -hmm. my grandmother, Miguel, yeah. had a big family. Daddy sure. was an only. Reunions. And they had a lot. Of, I mean, Summertime. I have pictures of them on the bridge, which I never got around to scanning. Yeah, of. Yeah. I don't know who the people are. No. They're probably all relatives, relatives and friends, and I had aunts, no clue. uncles. Daddy yeah. didn't label that one. No. <laughs> <laughs> they always say that right on the back. Who are these people? Oh, he did a marvelous yes. job of it. But it's not he... easy to do that, though. No. Plus, when you get the picture taken, he'd look and say, well, you know everybody anyway. I know. But they're not thinking 50 or 100 years down Later, the road. Yeah, but he did label everything, and he dated a lot of stuff. Yeah, that was good, dating it. Anything else you wanted to bring up for... 
Old Lang Syne. <laughs> Nothing I can... Beautiful home. Yeah, it was actually... The Blue Point landmark, the McGill Estate. Yeah, it really was. Just beautiful. And we were talking about it. And it was a treasure. I said my two, I was talking to my daughter and grandson, and we were saying, you know, I really do miss that house. Oh, yes. And I said, I, I didn't want to sell it, but it was so big. Too big, I know. And I, you know, Kathy yeah. was married in '89. Betsy was married in '90. Wow. And it, there we were, in this, and Elsie died. Elsie died now. In '90. Mm mm. Her yeah. f uh, funeral was at um, um, what's the name of the Catholic Church? Our, Our Lady, Lady of, Snow. of the Snow. Yeah. Yes. So her she funeral was, was there. Yeah. And I, I said to Jonathan, we'd been looking. Yeah. to think what we wanted to do. Sure, what are you going to do? And that mm -hmm. house was a lot of work. But at least when you sold it, it was in good shape. Yeah, it was. It was in very good shape. And the Boyers did a wonderful job. The Boyers were very good caretakers yeah. of it. Yeah. I still meet them. They live in Bayport. Yeah, that's what you said. I they bumped came into back. them one day. Yeah. They're such nice people. And... Uh, Bonnie and Clyde. Yeah, Bonnie and Clyde. I know Bonnie and Clyde. <laughs> yeah. And I had a little dog, Sandy, that looked oh, just Sandy. like... Oh, Sandy. Oh, that's just nice. Looked just like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Because we arrived one time, and I saw this thing over by the lake. Yeah. And I said to Kathy, oh. what do you think that cat's doing over the there? Cat. And she said, I don't know. So oh. I walked over, yeah. and it was this little puppy. Puppy dog. And she collapsed as I oh, went over. She did. Oh. And uh, so oh. I took her over to the bell porch. Yeah, go to the vet. <laughs> and uh -uh. the next morning she had survived. Oh. And um, she only lived to be six, but yeah. she could not walk from our house to the beach. Oh, so I oh. used to take her down to the beach. Carry her. And I'd make her do exercises yeah. in the day. Yeah. Okay. yeah, that's wonderful. And that's therapy. Oh, yeah, it was therapy Probably for Probably prolonged her life. Oh, yeah, she lived to be sick. Yeah, that's she good. She didn't have cancer. Sure, and, sure. But Sandy was, she was a great find. Oh, she, yeah. She, Elsie, absolutely. She was blind. Yeah. They had somebody had stuck pins in her eyes. Yeah. And, mm. and Elsie had absolutely adored that dog. Oh, yes, I'm so, sure. Uh, well, that was wonderful, Charlotte. Uh, actually, our cook also... I had a lot of family that would come out and visit. They would come out and visit, yeah. sure. And her, Ida's, the cook mm -hmm. was Ida Wilson, and her daughter, Annabelle, oh, Annabelle. grew up with um, Lena Horn oh, in Brooklyn. That's a famous name. Oh, yeah. And oh. I think Annabelle wanted to do what Lena Horn did, but I don't know. She died young. Oh, okay. But I, I, no. I met her. I mean, she was years older than I was, and I met her, but yeah. I don't know what happened. I've, yeah. If they ever told me. All right. Well, thank you very much. That was really fascinating. Can't wait to hear it on. <laughs> and you will get a copy of it. And thank you very much. That book's going right in the collection here. Okay. All these are local history books. So it'll be well-preserved. Ferndale. I ran across one piece of stationery with that name on it. Was it the stationery? Yeah. On it was, the back? It was very beautiful stationery. I, I don't know how I acquired it. Yep, that was it. Ferndale. Yeah. Maybe I sent you a Maybe you note did. Yeah. Uh, with it. Blue Point, New York, our favorite home. Yeah, Ferndale. It really was. And that was your grandfather. I came up with that name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ferndale. And I suspect it was for the whole place, yeah. the house. And this the was property. the porch that was always open. Yeah. It? And the, yeah. around the corner was screened. I remember you had a screen door right there. Yeah. I remember going into that screen door. Yeah. And then one year they... It was beautiful. They, somebody drove uh, over on the property near the lake and they got stuck. Oh. To go, I guess they were ice skating. Yeah. And so what did they do? They went over the house and they ripped off the screens. They ripped off the screens? And put it under the wheels of the oh, car so they could terrible. get out. Terrible. And my father came out that summer. Yeah. I was 78 and I said oh. to him, Daddy, we have to replace the screens. I know. I don't need screening, says he. Oh. And I said, are you going to enjoy the mosquitoes? I don't think that's and a good idea. And he said, they won't bother me, and I'm thinking, okay, I he's will. in his 90, so mm -hmm. maybe he won't be tasty, but no. I will be. They will. So I call Bob Hartwell, and I said, Bob, please. The screens have to go back. <laughs> they oh. went back. Gosh. And Daddy went back sitting on the porch. Yeah, because light from the house, the windows, mm. just attracts them. Oh, yes. <laughs> Not to mention food. All right, well, thanks again, Charlotte. That oh, you're was very really, welcome, really Jean. wonderful. 
This marks the end of the interview with Charlotte McGill Hicks.